Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to talk about EMTs and paramedics. And this is a continuation of other healthcare salaries we've been doing on this channel. If you click in the description below, there should be a link connecting you to a playlist we have here on YouTube of a whole series of other healthcare professions and the salary information and so forth, just like this video. So you may want to check that out. But in this video, I'm going to cover the job overview, the education requirements, the likes and the dislikes of this profession, and detailed salary information so you can know exactly how much these individuals make on average. So let's get started. First of all, what are the job duties and what does exactly does an EMT or paramedic do? Well, these individuals respond to those emergency situations and they are usually the first line of care for these individuals who have been involved in some type of accident. And some of the specific job duties that they will do, they will respond to 911 calls and provide CPR to individuals and, and assess them. They will transport those patients to the ER or other emergency uh, healthcare providers. They will create patient reports and give those to other healthcare professionals. They will also replace supplies on ambulances, for example, or what are their EMT vehicles. And they also decontaminate those vehicles because they can become contaminated with blood and so forth. Now, there are three different levels in most states, although other states have different criteria. Um, an EMT basic or an EMT level one, or some, as some states call it, that's the most basic level of care, and they assess and transport patients provide care in cardiac emergencies and things like that. Next, some states will have what's called an advanced EMT or an intermediate EMT. And these individuals can sometimes do some IV, uh, start intravenous lines. They can also give medications. And then of course you have the EMT paramedic or usually just called the paramedic. This is the highest level of training within this profession. And they provide the pre-hospital care and they will interpret EKGs, um, give medications, start IVs, and things like that. Now, what do you have to do if you want to become an EMT or a paramedic? Well, first of all, you have to have your high school diploma or GED equivalent, and you also need CPR certification, and that will sometimes be provided along with the training, but that's really important, of course. And it usually takes about 6 to 12 months to become an EMT entry level or an EMT basic and that is usually done through a diploma or a certificate program. Um, and it may last, again, six to 12 months, maybe a little longer. To become a paramedic, usually that takes about two years. And oftentimes that's done through an associate's degree program. And you will get an actual degree for that in most states. There are some diploma certificate programs for paramedic as well. But usually most places are moving towards an associate degree. Now, to become an EMT entry level, it usually takes about 150 hours of instruction. For an advanced or intermediate EMT, usually about 300 hours. And for the paramedic, it's up to 1,200 hours, even sometimes up to 1,800 hours of instruction. And you will have to be licensed in every state, and you will get certification, or you can get certification through the National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians. So that's a little bit about the job duties and the education requirements. Now I'm going to talk about some of the likes and dislikes of this profession. What do EMTs or paramedics tend to like about their job? Well, first of all, they tend to like that there are overtime opportunities. And that's good because they can do overtime and earn a little bit of a higher income, and a lot of them like that. Another thing is that there's a lot of 12-hour shift rotations in this profession. And some of them like that and some of them don't, but a lot of them do like that because they can get their work week done in just three days and then they usually have four off or they could even work overtime. And then by far the biggest thing they like about their job, and I've seen this trend in a lot of the healthcare professions, but especially with paramedics and EMTs, is that they genuinely save lives. I mean, these individuals are heroes. They go out there, they save lives in dangerous, um, life-threatening, accident, emergency type situations, and they go in and they're able to provide rapid care to these individuals and pull them from the brink of death and get them the care that they need. And I read a really interesting story about an infant who was born prematurely. And this particular child was only about three pounds as, as far as weight, born prematurely. The doctors did not expect him to live. He had maybe a 50-50 chance. And this young infant fought for his life and a doctor saw this infant and took compassion on it. And that doctor worked around the clock trying to help this infant to survive. And that infant did survive and he went on to become a paramedic. And what's interesting is that one day this same paramedic 
was going through and was called to the scene of an accident. It was an automobile accident. He went and his team was able to go in and save the life of the individual. Well, it turns out that individual was the same doctor who many years before had worked by his own bedside and helped save his life. So he got to return that favor. His name was Chris Trokey, and the doctor was Dr. Michael Shannon. And I thought that was a really interesting story. Now let's talk about some of the dislikes that EMTs and paramedics have about their job. One dislike is that it can be very high stress. And if you think about it, they're always being called on in emergency situations. People are frantic, they're confused, they're injured. Injured. And so, of course, that can be very stressful. It's not uncommon at all for EMTs to arrive and people be bleeding profusely, have limbs amputated in an accident. And so it can be pretty traumatic and stressful. Another thing is that the shifts can be quite unpredictable. And what I mean by that is a lot of EMTs or paramedics will talk about how some days it's just boring, nothing's going on, you just literally sit there waiting for something to happen. But then other days, it's absolutely crazy. It's a madhouse. You're getting called on all kinds of accidents and problems going on. So that shift unpredictability can be a little bit of a dislike. Another thing is that there's always the danger of being contaminated. And of course, they have to take special care, wear gloves and protective uh, masks and so forth. But they are dealing with injured individuals who may be bleeding and have uh, contaminated body fluids and so forth. So there's always that risk of their own injury or becoming contaminated if they work, for example, on a patient that has some kind of disease. Now, finally, another dislike is that they dislike some of the paperwork. And of course, they'll have to do reports and turn those into other healthcare professionals and they dislike that. Now let's talk about some of the salary statistics. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is the government agency that compiles and records jobs data, as of 2014, the average hourly income for an EMT or paramedic, they combined both of them, they didn't segregate them, but it was $16.88 per hour, and the average salary, $35,110. Now, paramedics, of course, are probably going to earn a little more than just an entry-level EMT since they do have more training, but the Bureau of Labor Statistics, like I said, they didn't segregate that out. They just kind of lumped them together. There were 235,760 EMT or paramedics employed, and according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there was a 23% growth rate projected for this profession between years 2012 and 2022. So it does look like there are going to be jobs opening up in the future. Now, let's talk about some of those factors that can greatly influence your salary because it depends on the state in which you live, it depends on the industry in which you work, your level of experience, and so forth. The industries with the highest level of employment for EMTs or paramedics, number one, ambulatory healthcare services came in. Number one, $32,270 was the average there. Local governments came in at number two, $39,010 was the average salary there. And then general medical and surgical hospitals came in at number three, $36,100 was the average salary there. What about the top paying industries? For this profession well state governments came in at number one the average there fifty four thousand eight hundred dollars medical and diagnostic laboratories came in at number two the average there fifty two thousand three hundred twenty dollars and then junior colleges came in at number three forty nine thousand six hundred twenty dollars was the average salary there what about the states that paid the most money washington came in at number one fifty seven thousand eight hundred fifty dollars District of Columbia, number two, at $56,390. And then Hawaii, number three, $48,970. The lowest paying state, West Virginia, $27,350. South Dakota came in at number two at $28,550. And then Wisconsin came in at number three, $28,900. So that's a little bit about EMTs and paramedics. If you would like to look at statistics for all 50 states, I'll put a link to the description below as well to our website and you can go there and you can look at the statistics for all 50 states, the average hourly wage and the average salary in a year. So thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel.